located in the Central Valley of California. The Fresno Fire Department. Established in 1877, the Fresno Fire Department is one of the oldest departments in the United States, rich in history and tradition. Today on the battalion, we start this 24 of a 48-hour shift at the very busy Station 5 with Engine 5's B-Shift. A typical, very hot Fresno summer morning, Captain Kirk Wanless whacks the hedges with his power trimmer as the crew begins their landscaping chores. Firefighter engineer Mike Zimmerman, affectionately known as Zippy, one of the regular firefighters for Engine 5's B-Shift, maneuvers the blower down the driveway. A traveling firefighter covering for Mike Alvarez works the broom in today's heat wave crossing the Central Valley of California. Firefighter Mike Alvarez is back at the station and on the engine with traveling firefighter Clint Walbeck. Repeating residential fire engine 5, 6, 20, truck 4, 11, battalion 3, zone 4, 6, 5, 7, 4, Talish between Mill and Way and Garland, 3, 6, 6, 9, North Talish. House has been evacuated. For the RP, they're all in the backyard, unable to exit from the backyard. For Sapphire Team, Talish I see operation for the fire The first call of the shift comes in. It sounds like it may be a structure fire. All apparatus on the Talish incident. Additional call and reporting. Correct location is 2954 East Millen Way. Millen Cross of Talish. Address updated. We definitely have smoke and fire showing. The engine company arrives on scene as first in. Firefighters Mike Alvarez and Clint Walbeck jump off the rig. The owner of the home is outside in his robe, nearly naked underneath. Firefighter Walbeck uh, goes to the rear of the, the engine attic, uh, and the, grabs uh, a pipe pole. Uh, Alvarez pulls a cross lay that bundles. He pulls it across the lawn, giving him enough length to get close enough to the fire. Alvarez pulls his hose line up to the garage while Walbeck flakes the hose line. The guys get their masks and gloves on. Mike takes his line in the garage and what looks like from the standpoint to be where the fire is centrally located. Through the thickening smoke, Mike starts putting water on the fire. Firefighter Walbeck checks the front door. Inside the home, the fire and gases are building and it needs to vent. He uses his pipe pole to vent a few windows from what is the kitchen.
Firefighter Walbeck, with his pipe pulled in hand, returns to the smoke-filled garage to find Alvarez on the nozzle. Alright, pull me some line here. Pull me some line. Second alarm is going to be engines 9 Firefighters Alvarez and Walbeck are all alone and trying to make entry into this well-seated fire. The outbuilding is blazing and has spread to the corner of the garage. Fire is engulfing the home. As it takes the kitchen, Alvarez exits the garage and stuffs the nozzle through the window to get the first water on the fire. The fire is now fully involved in the kitchen. The clutter in this home is causing a major access problem for the firefighters. The crew of Engine 6 breaks down the fence, gaining access to the backyard. But there is a ton of stuff precariously everywhere. They are able to drag their line close enough to start getting the water on the fire. This part of this large one-story home is blazing. You can hear the sound of ripping chainsaws as they cut vents in the comp shingle roof of this home. They must protect the neighboring home of any extension if possible. The Engine 6 crew is hitting both the outbuilding and the corner of the structure. Dark smoke is pumping out of the eaves. The captain from Engine 20 and firefighter Keola Park, a crew member from Engine 3 who is covering for a friend, are looking for access to the Charlie side of this ripping fire. Smoke from the attic pushes out of the eaves. The outside air brings the smoke to a flammable mixture and it ignites. I'm on the Charlie side right now. I had a report that we have lines down back here. It appears that they're sagging in the trees on the Charlie side. I'll go ahead and uh, issue an alert that they may be falling down. Also, we have uh, fire coming out of the uh, eaves on the Charlie side. With ventilation in progress, flames are blowing out the roof. Captain Mendoza from Engine 9 is on the line. It is all hands on deck for this one. Battalion Chief Escobedo keeps his eyes open and keeps the captain and his crew safe. Let's stop it. He's going to come down on him. Mendoza, steady! The radio sound you hear is an emergency alert tone telling everyone that there are down power lines. Captain Mendoza moves his hose line to get more water on the burning kitchen. The roof looks to be falling or collapsing. The firefighters carefully enter the home. The home is destroyed, but the neighboring home has been saved. Firefighter Keola Park from Engine 3 has made it to the Charlie side of the structure. He is up on the ladder with the hose line, plummeting water in the attic. Battalion Chief Escobedo keeps his eye on every firefighter and every little thing that may make this incident dangerous to the crews. Looking through the garage, 
you can see that the homeowner is checking out his vehicle to see if it was saved. Interior, the captain is on the line, continuing the salt of water on the living room. The fire in the garage just will not die out. There's the hose right here. Currently, Fresno has one less firefighter on calling. duty I'm, per day than they did back in 1955 when the city was four times smaller. I mean, it could be charged, but that's coax. Where's the main? Yeah, it's right up there. Right Coming through the trees. There you go. Right. The at all. The hard to see. I'm doing that around first. Come up the train, That's right. Bells are going off on many of the SCBAs. They have been in use this entire time and are running out of air. It's time for rehab for the crews that were first in. Hot. Very hot. Um, we couldn't make much, uh, much way when we got interior. One, we were waiting for two out for a little while. And uh, two, there was a lot of heat there at the door. Uh, the fire was fully involved in the kitchen. We only made it into the entryway there. and. Uh, started knocking fire down while we waited for two out and then uh, we got some more backup and uh, we're able to make a little bit of progress. It was slow going until we got some holes in the uh, in the roof there to help vent some of that heat and uh, once they got holes I think they put six holes in this residential roof here and uh, it took all of them to actually get some of that heat out of there so we can make progress and put it out. The Rick team have been planted here since they arrived on scene in case they are needed to save a firefighter's life. The owner of the home watches as the firefighters begin the haul out. Back in the living room, we follow a line to find firefighters in the attic, still getting water on the smoldering rafters. We find a flare-up in the rafters. They call out for more lines. This is how short-handed they are in Fresno. Our cameraman has to go out, put the camera down, and get more line to the firefighter in the attic. After pulling line, he picks up his camera and continues to film. He has been filming with fires for over 10 years, so he knows what to do and how to do it safely. Crews are back inside, preparing for salvage. They begin salvage for this homeowner. The firefighters lay out their equipment and their MSA air bottles to be refilled by the air truck on scene. Italian Chief Escobedo shows us something he found while doing his inspection. So I'm back here, a safety due inspection of the premise. 
and I walk back here and here's what I find. Oh, I'm interested in going spelunking. Oh, here it is. <laughs> so he's saying he was just using this for dirt to make mounds throughout his backyard. I don't see a lot of mounds. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, so. um, and then the other stuff is to fill. Exactly. And Look, there's the water cabinetry the down there. That's freaky. Now, in case of a fire, imagine fighting a fire and then you fall into this hole and nobody ever finds you. I'm just wondering, who's been missing? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. All right, basically a safety officer and inspection of the premise at the structure fire. We did find an underground cave at the rear of the premises here. And it's about 10 feet deep, maybe uh, five feet, 15 feet wide. And we do have code enforcement and law enforcement en route to investigate not just the cause or the reason they have this cave, but there's pretty bad odors coming out of it and make sure we don't have nothing else that may lead to any criminal activity at this location. And as you can imagine, uh, to, this, to our surprise, when this whole area was covered with smoke, the firefighters are fighting the fire, you couldn't see this this big old hole here in the back of this house, and you could have easily fallen and, and nobody would ever find you. And if you did, uh, it'd be uh, pretty uh, dangerous to get you out because uh, the there's been a collapse of some of the ground, uh, the dirt here, and it's, uh, we believe it's to be unstable. In the front yard of the neighbor's home, all the crews gather to go over this morning's operation. Chief Tobias is the IC on this fire. And he takes the opportunity to debrief the incident with the crews on scene. And we pulled past and found a spot over there. Talked to Captain Wanless and his assignment was ventilation. We got tooled up, started making our way over here, and uh, tried to arrive on air. Uh, there was a lot of radio traffic you initially when everyone was arriving, so I went ahead and hit the button, and then face to face with Captain Wallace for an assignment, and then we uh, laddered the uh, route and started going up over there. Uh, then we, I uh, did a walk around to the back side. I didn't get all the way over to the Bravo side of the structure, but I was able to get all the way to the back side of the Charlie see where the fire involvement was, most of it was blowing out the back, as well as what the involvement was inside the house there. Um, we got a second egress ladder up on the uh, uh, northwest corner, which uh, the service drop was just above that area. But there was fire along the roof line on the back side, and then tree branches all along the eaves on the north side. So really that was the only corner that had an open spot. Um, and uh, so then I went back up to the front, uh, talked to my crew as they were going up, and then uh, went up with them after, and they cut a couple of holes uh, closer to the carport area, one on each side of the peak. And uh, we had uh, fire conditions there. We knew uh, uh, smoke and heat was building inside. You could see it's pancaking down and coming out of all the orifices. So we were trying to get that open for fire attack. <clears throat> then we came over to the main structure of the house, opened up another one there on the southern aspect, and then uh, two additional on the northern aspect. So how many and, holes all together? Uh, five. Five ventilation holes. eight, but it was five. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah. yeah, and, and uh, after we had done that, we talked to fire attack, asked how things were going in there, and they said, hey, it is still way too hot in here, we do not have any relief. Uh, we were punching through some of them. Uh, one of the ones I was punching through, I was basically a marshmallow on a stick getting lit up as I was trying to go through that thing. So. Um, we were uh, trying to open it up. We started going up to do some more and there was already someone in the attic right there. So that's when we stopped our operation and uh, fire attack, I think, had control of the top that time. Engine six. Uh, we got here in second, we're assigned uh, two out and uh, we're man in the line. We noticed the exposure on the on the B side, Bravo side was starting to take off. Uh, Wallace and I talked face to face. He said, all right, just Handle that, so we took our two outline, took, went around to, uh, to take care of that exposure. He made contact with uh, Wallback and told you, hey, you don't have a two outline anymore, stay out. Uh, so that way they were pretty much on the same page. And uh, we just kept that exposure from taking off. It was There was quite a bit of fire on the Bravo side. A lot of fire. Yeah. Good. Uh, okay, Dan, now you're up.
gave me the assignment when we were uh, probably still a couple minutes out. Um, so we, he gave me Bravo side. We showed up. I told Juanless we had Bravo with engine six. And he says, negative, you're going inside doing interior. Dave, where's the engine 20? Engine 20, we, we actually were prior to engine nine. Uh, we got assigned water supply, did a reverse lay right there off of Millen to engine 5. Checked with uh, engineer from 5, he had a lot of water, so kind of took our time. Got the water supply, then we got reassigned utilities, secured that. Then finally after that, we um, pulled the apartment lay down the delta side of the structure, and we were assigned Division Charlie. And there was a lot of fire going through the roof line that Captain DeLapp talked about. A ladder got up in the attic from the exterior and knocked a pretty good portion of the fire out.